Today I'm joining in with a Penguin and Pear and her Sew a Top Challenge and reviewing this top. Hi and welcome to my channel. My name's Sam and this is Frugalissima where I talk about all things sewing. And today I am joining in with uh, Claire from Penguin and Pear. We are doing a, a vlog hop, which is something new for me, uh, where there are 31 vloggers or YouTubers uh, from the sewing community. And each day of August we are reviewing a top. So it's the Sew a Top Challenge. First of all, I'd just like to say thank you to everyone who's subscribed so far and hello if you are new here. If you've come over from the uh, vlog hop, uh, welcome. Please consider uh, liking and subscribing my videos. On a Sunday, I publish reviews and plans and makes and during the week I've been doing a 100 days of sewing. So if I refer to that, that's what I'm talking about and essentially that is showing people that sewing's a, an accessible and relatively inexpensive hobby to join into. First of all, the uh, vlog hop, uh, we'll put a little uh, graphic up to show you who's participating. And uh, yesterday it was It Is Josie and tomorrow it will be Roxanne Stitches. I'll put a link to both those YouTube accounts below and I will also include a list of everybody who's taking part. So when Claire put the call out to uh, the Sew a Top Challenge, I was keen to include a, a free top pa pattern for mine, just so that everybody could participate and, and, get, and download the pattern if they wanted to. When I was thinking about what top to make, I was going to do the wrap top from Peppermint magazine, which is the one that Josie did yesterday, so it's a good job I didn't tell, so you'd have been sat here um, bored, <laughs> wondering why I'm talking about the same top. But I saw uh, somebody post this on the Foldline Facebook group, and I thought this would be an interesting one to try. I'd never seen this one before and I thought it would add some interesting details. So I thought I'd give it, this a go and give it a review. So this is the Geo Tank from Miss Yuzu, I think that's how it's pronounced, patterns. I've never come across this pattern company before. In the editing, I'll, I'll write the name below. So you can tell me if you've come across it before, uh, the pattern company before and tell me how to pronounce it. But it's spelt M-I-S-U. SU, so it's either Misusu or Misusu, uh, and I think they're a, a Dutch pattern company. To access the pattern, you just need to join the Facebook group, which I'll link below, and uh, you are then able to access the link, which takes you straight through to the pattern. And uh, it's eight euros, I think, uh, normally, and you just go through the checkout process, put in your details, and it's automatically free at checkout, so it's quite straightforward. And she has some really nice patterns on there. Because it's a new pattern company to me, I'll just chat a little bit about the company. Um, it looks as though um, she started off as a children's wear design, pattern designer, uh, and has then branched out recently to women's wear. So there aren't a lot of um, adult patterns on there. I think there's probably about two or three tops and maybe two or three skirts or something like that. But this really caught my eye because of all the uh, just the details so I'm just gonna bring myself in a little bit closer so that you can see so the design of it is a, a square um, hole here and that's what was the point of difference so it's, it's essentially quite a basic tank what I liked about it is that you've got the choice of uh, Two lengths, which you can do that with any any anything really. Two necklines, so you've got a high crew neckline and this deep scoop, and then there are three different uh, armband choices. So you've got a narrow one, which is just this narrow one like this. This would be narrow all the way. Uh, then you've got one that's slightly in between this narrow one and this broad one, which would just insert on its own, or you've got this wide one and the narrow one together, the combination one, which obviously I went for, but um, I'll talk about why I chose to do that in a second. So what I liked about the uh, pattern is, the, is, the, is this little detail here. There are, um, all the patterns seem to have a nice little twist uh, to them, so little unusual details. And 
uh, what a great little scrap buster this is as well. So I was using, essentially I was using uh, scraps from a previous project as, a, as a, I like to do and I really love this fabric. I, I bought it last year and made a dress with it and the scrap was a really awkward shape because the original dress had uh, a wrap and it, it was a really huge diagonal cut out of it. So although there was quite a bit of fabric left, they were all really strange shapes. So originally I wanted to go with the longer version which would have hit me at the low hip uh, but I just didn't have enough fabric and I didn't have enough fabric for the front and the back. Uh, so that led me to the design choices that, that I made. I always wanted the scoop neck. Um, I'm not a massive fan. I do wear crew necks but I've got plenty of crew necks and I thought if it's a... If it's a, a a tank top or a vest top as we would call it in the UK then I, I wanted the lower neckline really because I'd be wearing it in summer. So that was the first design choice was a scoop neck. Uh, I had to go for the crop um, and I was a little bit worried about going for the crop. With with um, high-waisted shorts which is what I tend to wear it's absolutely fine I'm not showing any stomach or anything so that's absolutely fine for me. Then at the back then I'll just whiz round them so that you can see Hopefully there you can see that I've, I've, the back is in a, in a different direction. Again, that was a choice to do with how much fabric I had. Um, I just simply couldn't get that back on, on the fold and uh, I could have seamed it and I didn't really want to seam this fabric uh, down, the, down the middle so I, se I seamed it across the top. So you can really have fun with this pattern with uh, different scraps. I've seen versions where the, this, armband, this armband here is in two pieces. So you've got an upper and a lower band. So you could have that in two different colours. Could have done this a different colour. So I could have really gone to town with all the different uh, colour blocking and what have you. Uh, so, but I, was really, I really was quite limited as to what fabric I had. Uh, this navy blue is off some fabric that I bought from the remnant bin from Lucky Fashions from my summer sewing plans. So I, I didn't really want to use a lot of that because I've got plans for making uh, the short sleeve t-shirt with that. Uh, so I didn't really want to cut into too much of that neither. On to the pattern instructions. So it's aimed at a confident beginner and I would say that I wouldn't want to do this if it was my very first t-shirt pattern or jersey or knitwear pattern. Uh, I have done in my 100 days of sewing a, a video on the Mandy Boat Tea and one of the other ladies have act has actually done a review of that. If it's your very first knit pattern then I would attempt that one first but just simply because you haven't got these all these bands to insert. It's not difficult to do it but I don't think I would, I think I might be a little bit put off if this was my very first ever knit garment to be sewn. So there's no specialist equipment that needed really. It does specific it does say that you don't need a serger and I would I would say that's definitely you definitely don't. Um, I've got some of this spare fabric here. This fabric doesn't fray. Uh, it, you know there's no fraying on this at all and, and most sort of single jerseys won't fray. It might curl a little bit. The navy blue wanted to curl. Uh, this doesn't it's quite a stable, um, it's quite a stable cotton uh, jersey is this and I got this from Fabworks last year but I've, I've been today and they don't have any more, more of this unfortunately. It is really pretty. Uh, so you can, if you want to finish it, and I finished mine on my surgery because I, I, I've got one and I can, you can, uh, but if you want to you can, you can zigzag uh, on the insides. You will need a, a ballpoint needle to sew with and you can uh, finish round the uh, neckline and the hem with a t twin needle. I did because I've got because I've got a twin needle. But you can just do it with a zigzag. You don't need to do it with a twin needle. And if you're new to twin needling, uh, I'm planning on uh, putting another short video up uh, next week of how to use a twin needle. But you can probably just see here. I don't uh, buy an extra spool of thread. I just uh, put it on my. Uh, a spool and use that. You don't need you don't need two spools. You can just use a, an extra spool. So that's your that's your top tip of the day. Uh, but again, like I say, you don't actually need to do a twin needle. That's that's just that's all design preference. If you want to do a, a zigzag, that 
that's absolutely fine. So for sizing, um, you have got, I'll do it in inches and I will put uh, a little chart uh, on the screen so you can have a look. Uh, but for the sizing, you're going from a 31 and a half inch bust to a 48 and a, eight and a 0.8 inch bust. And it's done like that because I think it's been converted from metric to um, imperial. Because 48.8 uh, isn't really a measurement. <laughs> it's a combination of both. Uh, your waist goes from 25.2 to 40.9 inches. And your hips goes from 30. 4.6 to 50.4 uh, so it's quite a wide range of size in there the pattern designer stresses that to for you for your sizing and it goes a to h or something it doesn't go one two three or ten twelve you need to take a measurement of your high bust and your full bust and then make a decision then as to what size you go for there's quite a lot of ease on the waist and hips and uh, there's negative one and a half inch negative ease on your bust. So you must first of all measure, and I've done a little video of, of how to measure yourself as well if you're unsure. First of all, measure your high bust and your full bust. If you've got more than four inches difference between your high bust and your full bust, there is a pattern, separate pattern piece in there uh, for full bust allowance you don't have to do that yourself which I, I would imagine if that's the job that you have to do would be fabulous uh it's not it's not something i have to do i've only got two inches difference so i've noticed quite a few pattern companies now are actually including uh, a full bust adjustment within their patterns or a, a separate pattern piece shall I, should i say within their patterns which i think is really really good the uh, Love Notions top, uh, the Rhapsody blouse and the Melody top that I've made recently, they're, bo they're both included separate pattern pieces so if you need a full bust adjustment. So it saves people messing about. So she has lots and lots of information. The instruction booklet is about 40 pages long. She's got lots of information on, on fitting and she does advise to make a toile. <laughs> so, and to wash pre-washy fabric, which would please me no end. Uh, so yeah, obviously, um, there's, if this, this to me was a wearable toile. I've, I've just made it out of um, remnants that I'd kicking about. She does advise to make a toile, but you, there's enough information on there to, to know that you can get a, real, a decent fit your first time round, is what I'm trying to say. The pattern is drafted for somebody who's five foot six, so technically I should have lengthened the bodice, but as I say, I didn't have enough fabric to do any, any kind of lengthening or pattern matching either. Um, this was a de design decision to put this a different way to that. I, I just want, I liked, I wanted to play about with um, how, it, how it was placed. Uh, but I didn't have enough fabric really to, to give me any extra length and I really didn't need it. Like I say, I, I originally wanted to go for the longer length, but this length is absolutely fine with these shorts as you can see. It sits just below where my belly button would be. I've got high-waisted shorts on here. These are the Pietras, posit car patterns. I'm not flashing my belly, so it's, the, it's, it's fi absolutely fine as a length for me, is that? So because I am around about 35 at my high bust and 37 across my uh, full bust, I chose size H and that was for 35.8 and 37.8 across both the high bust and the, the full bust and a waist of 31 and a half inches. I am usually 32 inch uh, waist, I'm probably closer to 33 inches waist now but because there's about three four inches uh, ease across the waist I knew I'd be okay uh, and I really like the fit around the waist. Now it, it flares out but not too swingy, uh, it just gives you that little extra bit of comfort without it being too clingy, which I, I don't particularly like. So I appreciate the fact that it's a looser fit around there without it being too big and swingy. So once you've determined your size, uh, there is uh, the pattern is it comes in layers. You can print off just the pattern piece, pieces that you need. You need to decide whether or not you need the full bust adjustment piece before you start printing because you can actually exclude that for printing and there's a little chart there that tells you what you can print what you need to print 
so it says printing pages that you don't need. There's also a little flow chart that tells you uh, which pieces you need to print off for these these uh, bands as well. That This is the hardest part of the pattern really, is deciding what, what fabric you've got, what you're using, making sure that your stretch is the same. That does It does actually stress that in the pattern. Uh, if you And there are separate pattern pieces actually if you are going to use a rib knit for any of this. Uh, obviously a rib knit's got a lot more stretch in it so you would need smaller pattern pieces. So you do end up with quite a lot of pattern pieces which if you're not organised you could get, end up getting a little bit confused. I ended up having to put all the pattern pieces to one side that I didn't need uh, and then just you know just use the ones that I did need. So that's the hardest bit of this pattern really. That and making sure that you get this, this pivoting right here. So yes, you, you really need to have a clear idea of what, what fabric you're using uh, before, you, before you print off. The reason I chose the broad and the narrow band uh, was just to have extra coverage over my bra strap. If I just took it into where the narrow band would be, it barely covers my bra and it, it doesn't at the back at all. Um, so I, I just don't like to have uh, any kind of bra on show. So that's the reason I chose that. But it is the most, it is the more complicated one uh, because what you're actually doing is sewing this narrow one to this broad one, which doesn't go underneath, by the way. It only, it only has the narrow one underneath uh, before you actually insert it. It's not complicated because all you're doing with uh, the broad one is, is folding it in half and then sewing, my, matching your notches and sewing it to the broad one. Then you go into the insertion. Uh, and you can just have lots of fun with, uh, with, just, with, with stripes or colour blocking. Like I say, you could have this a different colour to that. You could have your neckband a different colour. Um, so if you've got lots of little uh, jersey remnants about it, you've got, you could have lots of fun with this. It does stress on the pattern that you need to pay attention to your notch placements. And I would, uh, I would say that that is, that is quite important. The way this band is inserted into this sleeve here, because it's square and not round, you have to uh, make a pivot here, which I've not done a brilliant job of, but I've done an okay job of. Um, so you just need to make, pay attention to, to where, um, where you're stopping and starting here, uh, and then pivot, pivot round. It's quite difficult to explain without the instructions in front of you. By matching your notch, by having all your notches in place and matching them up before, it means that all oh, this is is evenly distributed. One thing I would say is, if it it suggests using um, a, a very narrow zigzag, and to test it on some fabric first, which I did, um, but and it worked fine. The the very narrow zigzag worked fine on my side seams and my shoulder seams, but. Um, on this one, I, I've done it on that one and I can feel that it's it's not sitting flat. You can't see it so much on wearing it, but you can certainly feel the difference. And I, I just changed to a straight stitch on there. This isn't going to get stretched, uh, so it's absolutely fine. It's Apart from the arm band insertion, it is a very simple construction. You join your, your shoulder seams, you join your side seams, insert your arm bands, uh, and your neckband and then do your hem and it's finished. One little tip I have for hemming is if, I f if I'm using a twin needle and I feel that either the fabric is going to tunnel, which it sometimes does, or just don't give me any trouble, I just use this, this tape here. So it's a little bit like uh, what we used to call Wonderweb. I mean, mum used to put my jeans up with it, but it's only got sticky on one side. So it's one-sided, it's got a slight stretch to it and it just gives you a little bit of stability in your hems. So it stops it um, misbehaving really. So I've got quite a, quite a neat hem there and it's not sort of trying to, to pucker or anything. So that's just one little, one little thing that I do. If I feel like um, my hems are, are going to, and I can't, if you can remember, if you know the name of that, I need some more, <laughs> I can't remember what it's called. It's not Wonderweb. Uh, I don't know if it's Knit and Stable or something like that, something something like that. I can't remember what it's called. Uh, so I need some, so leave me a message below if you, if you can remember what it's called.
So it does warn you in the pattern that you might need to make adjustments of the length, to the length of these bands. But like I said, there's a different size band if you're using a jersey, uh, a rib jersey to uh, a non-ribbed jersey. Different band sizes for a uh, full bust pattern piece as well. There's a different size for that. Uh, the size that they provided worked out just fine for me, so I didn't have to make any adjustments. But that's just something that you need to, to watch out for. That's just something to watch out for. The final thing about this is a little extra design detail, which I quite like. And I'll show you on a different t-shirt. On this t-shirt here, this is a Stellan uh, T. Um, can't remember the pattern company, I'll put, I'll put it be below. And you can see that there's a little uh, strip of um, fabric across the back network band. And I think it just gives it, and it, this pattern has the same uh, feature. And I just think it gives it that extra finishing touch, really. It just gives, makes it look a little bit more professional. So uh, that's it with the, on, on, this, on this top. Um, I thought I'd just show you. And that's the back. So I've just done the, just done the design a different way. So that's my review. Uh, really chuffed that I found a, a new pattern company and uh, let me know if you've, if you've heard of Misusu before or how to pronounce it. Thank you to Claire from Penguin and Pear for hosting this uh, Sewer Top Challenge. I've really enjoyed it and uh, it's brought a new pattern company to me, for me to try. Um, thought it'd be interesting for, to see what everybody else has been making and there's been some really nice tops uh, being, being made. Uh, so if you hop on over to either It Is Josie who uh, came before me uh, yesterday or Roxanne Stitches is tomorrow and I'll put a link to everybody else's. So that's it from me. I will be back next week with some more of my 100 days of sewing and I will uh, put some photographs of me wearing this top and I will speak to you later. Bye.